Here we go. Man, we're a little too color coordinated here. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> this is cute, huh? <laughs> this is very cute. It's all right. Don't worry about uh, it. I can take this off. Yeah. You don't have to. It, it doesn't matter to me. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be Better Golf. Really excited to play today with Eric Tree. Eric, how are you? Good. We'll do this fist bump here. Really excited to play today out at Journey at Pechanga. And we're gonna do a playing lesson on the front nine and a match on the back nine. So stay tuned, it should be really exciting. Eric, you're one of the ambassadors of this course. Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, back in 2013, I've known Scott Mallory, the director here for a while, and uh, I was looking for another place just to work on my game. Okay. So I reached out to him and he was inviting me out at times to come and, and practice a little bit, but he said, let's make it official. Mm -hmm. So I gave him my resume and they put it in front of the board and we were happy to have me out. But let's get into some strategy. So normally, Eric, I never know like, you know, aiming is kind of weird because I don't know if, because it seems in golf, like if you aim thinking, like compensating for your miss, then you're kind of mentally like resigning yourself to that miss so that's the aiming so if, if you say you're fading it so you aim up the left hand side you might like slice it because you're aiming for it how do you like to to approach aim um there's you know gathering information out on the hole so you know this is a pretty wide open par five in terms of nothing really in front of us but fairway uh, so there's a tree down the right side that might be 350. That's out of play. The bunker out there is probably 340. It might oh, be out okay. of play today. Oh yeah. Um, so, so basically we got a wide open fairway. We got wind coming uh, off the left and maybe a touchdown or maybe just across. So for me, I know my ball goes a little left to right okay. on this hole. Mm -hmm. So I go at that bunker and mm -hmm. I'm just trying to play to a zone. So I, I aim at that bunker and I just let it go and let it fall to the right. It's a reachable par five. Yeah. Let's see it. You know, today as we're playing, there's a microphone on you, but put a little microphone inside your brain. Yeah. And kind of like as you're having thoughts, to just yeah. let them flow. And I think a lot, a lot of people will be able to get some good information out of this. Yeah. So for this particular uh, wind condition, you know, I'll, and you know, we've got a ton of rain here the last week, so the fairways would be fairly soft. Mm -hmm. So I like on this hole for my ball to be up in the air a little bit and ride the wind. Okay. Yeah. So I start with with what the conditions feel like and then based off that i go to t height oh, okay and it's just whatever it looks like to me that that fits what i'm feeling for the way i want my ball to fly that's kind of where my t ends up okay All right so i don't spend a lot of time behind the ball you know looking and doing all this stuff and yeah. visualizing it's all kind of automatic for me mm -hmm. especially on a course that i've played so much so it's it's sensing the conditions, it's throwing the peg in the ground, putting the ball on it. I step back, I know it's going at that bunker every time I play here. So I don't have to sit back and do all this extra stuff. I just get set, I'm looking down where I want it to go. My body's falling comfortably in line to where I want it set up. Oh, great shot. Yeah, let it so, go. so you. Because it somehow sometimes it happens when you have the intermediate target here, uh, you kind of fixates your brain right here. But like I know, your eyes were always out, out there. They're always out there. For me, when I have tried that going, a, you know, a yard in front. Yeah. For me, it would be like driving my car, staring at my hood ornament, and letting that guide me. Yeah. Right. Some people it works fine. That's the yeah. way my my eyes and my senses yeah. thrive. Is I don't want to look there. I'm set up to what, where my ball's going. Okay, I like what you did. I'm gonna to try to do that. Well, a little right. I think that's uh, you hit the hill. I think yeah, I'm on the. It's fine. In, I'm, so I think I'm on the side of the hill. So there. for a, a short par five, if you miss the fairway, yeah, it's a three-shot hole anyway. So right, we don't need extra pressure on having to get it in play oh, okay. off the tee off a right. short par five. Do you feel like? How, where, where do you think the biggest mistake amateurs make on par five tee shots is? Do you think it's like, and we can, we can walk and talk. Do you think it's um, that they try to hit it too hard thinking that, oh, it's a par five, I need to kill it here? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, a lot of times they'll put pressure on. It's a short par five, I, I have to make birdie, or I need to make birdie, or I should make birdie, yeah. right? It's, you know, for me, it's, it's none of that. It's a, it's a 500 yard hole, that's what it is. So I start by putting myself in position the best I can to go to the next shot. So I don't think I should make birdie here. 
It just right. puts extra pressure on having to do something that I'm already going to do, which is hit a drive and play. Oh, okay. Right? Gotcha. So amateurs will go, oh, it's, you know, and then they try to do a little bit extra. And that little bit extra is what interferes what they could already do automatically and just send it the way they send it. But then yep. they go, oh, I got to make sure I draw it or fade it or, or hit it harder. So for, for me, all that stuff's included with, hey, it's, uh, you know, it's this length hole, whatever it is. Here's the conditions. Here's the T height that I'm, that I'm feel is right for the shot I want to hit. So give us a little update on your game and what might be coming up for you. What, what's the plan now that you, I think you just passed 50. So what, what's your plan playing wise? Are you getting more interested in teaching or are you? No, I'm going to, I'll start playing. I just signed up. For, I'll play, do uh, both U.S. Open qualifiers for the, the for regular the, and the senior open. Uh-huh. Um, we got a or cart path only. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I just looked at it yesterday and I was going to go up to Goose Creek. 45 minutes from my house, but it's full. <laughs> right. So, uh, oh, for which one? For the senior, senior. Okay. Open. I'll be in the 200 range. So if I'm on the side of that hill, I'll, I'll take. A so you could take a seven iron. Seven iron. Yeah. So for me, I'm going to take a, a little head cover and a four and a five iron. All right. I wanted to ask your your opinion about something. You know, there's that famous quote from I think Claude Harmon, senior. He said that like there was a guy up at Winged Foot, and and he said another pro had bet him that okay claude had said if i caddy for him and i could i could get that guy to break 80 and they bet some like obscene amount of money for the time and they went around the course and and claude just had him like dinking and ducking it certain ways and the guy broke 80 that's how the legend goes yeah do you do you think like with your mindset and maybe like a 10 handicaps game you could you like pretty assuredly maybe like break like 75 or 80 um, uh, certainly break 80. Breaking 75, you need for well, a 10 handicap. Well, let's walk to my ball. Yeah. Yeah. For a 10 handicap, still to break, set, shoot 75. That's a, that's a lot. So yeah. That's, that's like you shooting 65. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, you know that's that skill matched up with a good strategy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can certainly take you know almost any golfer and save them strokes just by telling them what to do because I see so often in that they're they're hitting shots that they don't need to and they put themselves out of position when they don't need to uh, so they like, have the skill to hit shots but okay you know let's say they're they're 230 or 40 yards out yeah on a par five and they'll take their three wood or their five wood and they'll hit step it step right here just to the right of my ball yeah and they'll hit it way up there i'm like where are you hitting this ball like oh i'm just gonna put it up in there i'm like well, if you do that, it's still a difficult shot from there. Yeah. And that's a small area you're trying to hit. Yeah. So. So even if everything goes perfectly, you're still going to be. You're still you're still in a tough spot. All right, so. I'll let you caddy for me here. Luckily, we have a thick rough, but it is, is all growing that way. I had seven iron. Yeah. So if uh, if you want a yardage. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we'll give you a number. So I I start on a layup. I start with a number to the hole. Oh. Okay. So we got two forty four. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's a ditch. We probably have 190 to the ditch. Okay. Right. So, but it doesn't even matter on this shot. We got 244 to the hole. So I'm looking at my favorite number would be around 90 yards. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at a 150 to 160 yard shot. You just got to hit it decent. We're only okay. looking for a 150 yard seven iron. Right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's real good. I like that a lot. Yeah. No, a little deep. <laughs> it went pretty. <laughs> Should have got so the th This was like a, a flyer. <laughs> it was. It See, that's the thing that pros can do really well. When I have played played with uh, guys as good as you, is they can really analyze. Not only can they hit it well, but they can analyze what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, like just to see, show you guys this lie. See how all the grass is is growing towards there. Yeah. Now I was looking at it thinking, oh, that's probably a flyer, but I was also thinking, well, I could also see it totally muffling my shot. So I wasn't right. really sure. Right. Okay, so Eric has his perfectly out in the middle of the fairway here. So the, the information I'll gather, I start with the hole. I got 208. I shoot the face of the hazard in line with the hole, which is about 190 
<clears throat> and then the back of the green, best I can get it here is going to be 214. Oh, those are the three numbers you like. Yeah. yeah. So now I have 190 to 214, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going to pick something that goes at least 190, but not really much more than 214. Mm -hmm. And then the pin is going to be somewhere in the middle. Pin's 208. I'm trying to get as close to that as I can. Okay. But I'm at least covering, at least covering 190. Yep. A little bit of help here. What are you thinking clubwise? A little bit of help. Probably four. This is the second swing of the day so mm -hmm. you know yeah the range was close folks so you, you gotta at least wrench. give us five strokes aside because we weren't <laughs> able to, to warm up i'm this close going to that head cover uh, right. <laughs> just so i can muffle it <laughs> uh-huh so you know the wind is going just a hair down mostly from the left and there's not a lot maybe five or eight miles an hour so the pin a little bit on the right so my eyes are just kind of with, with all that I'm feeling, with the wind and how I feel, uh, my eyes are drawn to a target, right? And it's probably 10 yards left of that hole. Probably that big, ugly palm tree that's way in the distance. Right. So just try to forget about that and really <laughs> yeah, fixate so on the palm tree. I'm, now I'm looking at a 200 yard shot or so that's going at that palm tree. So again, my eyes are just, they keep going to that, <clears throat> to that palm tree. So I get set up to that palm tree and I just do my waggles until and I tried to give it extra. <laughs> yeah. Give me it, it's actually gonna be in a real good spot. Yeah. It's it's you you pulled it by about 25 yards, but you're pin high. And that's the thing I always hear pros talking about is is the value of being pin high. Played a lot with uh, Chad Campbell Oh yeah, uh, on the Hooters tour back in the late '90s, and the yeah. quality of that guy—a like phenom ball strike. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. so good! Uh, and you know what he did so well was he got it pin high a lot. And when you're pin high, uh, <laughs> you know you could you can get it within let's say let's say eight to ten yards on either side, mm -hmm. which is giving you inside of 30 feet. Yeah. And when you're pin high, you know you're not that far off. But like being pin high all, all the time so much, that's mostly a result of like somebody that, that's like hitting it on the button very consistently. Yeah. Because even if you're pulling it or pushing it, it's on the button. It's on the button. Yeah. Yeah. And so the miss will be, you know, miss will be a little left, a little right, but you know, the quality of the strike is generally pretty good. That gets you going the distance. Yeah, it's early in the round, Eric, but one of the things that I notice when I hear you and I've watched other, other pros playing and stuff, the more you talk through a shot, the more confident you get. And when I see amateurs trying to do the same thing we do, the more they talk through a shot, the more almost they're convincing themselves of how difficult the shot is. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like your confidence though, it, it, from get, walking up to the ball to the time you hit is always getting higher. And another player is like, from the time they walk up to the ball, it's like their anxiety is always getting higher. Yeah. So, so I wonder, like, how do we have good strategy and stuff, but without the baggage? Uh, you, you could strip it down down to what it is. Okay. It's ninety yards. Yeah, yeah. You got seventy to cover the hazard, so it's it's just ninety yards, and all you're trying to do is lay your skill over a ninety-yard shot the best you can. Right. That's it. Right. So, you know, we look at this, we got 90, we might have 98 to the back. Yeah. So we're trying to get as close to 90 as we can. We got room right of it, we got room left of it. So it's kind of a green light. I always wonder this with, with pros. Now, are you thinking in your mind, it's 90 total. Are you thinking in your mind, like how much you're gonna carry it? And then like based on how much roll there'll be? Or yeah. are you thinking like total number? Well, total number, I want it to end up at 90. Right. It wants to stop at 90. How it gets there is, you know, one of the sessions we did uh, a couple a month oh, yeah. ago. It's, you really have to. Yeah, it's. Do I want this coming in high, low, depending on the wind, the firmness of the greens, all that? So, you know, it might be in the air for 82. It might be in the oh, air okay. for 92. All right. So right. here, it's probably pretty soft. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking 86. I'll yeah. Be, I'd be happy with that uphill putt. Yeah. All right. So I got my little spot here, Eric. <sighs> Good alignment. Oh. 
It's all right. I just like consistently pulling my I, wedges and short irons. Mm -hmm. And especially like when my balance is compromised, you can see all I right. kind of fall this way, which makes the club go that way. What did you see in that one? Yeah, same. You got it down here and this, this didn't fall down So I was so, you. so pretty good to here. Yeah. And then I kind of finished this way. Yeah, and this start, exactly. That right side started to Come fall on. down the hill. Mm -hmm. So we got to get this. Have some force counteracting yeah. the, that. Yeah, and it's almost like that left side, that left side can kind of get down into here just a little bit, just so it's not turning so soon mm -hmm. to get this to come over to go left. The left side can get here sooner. Yeah, it just kind of falls down. You can oh, go okay. lower. Or more of a yeah. falling than, than right. it, because you, you throw it, then you got energy going that way. Yeah. From 90 yards, you're looking to hit it to probably about 16 feet, 17 feet yeah. would be decent. I mean, you know, it's trying to, trying to, trying to hold it. <laughs> right. You know? Right. I'm trying to hold it, but at the same time, I'm going to be in position to make it a par. You're right. Right. So it's not getting so reckless and aggressive that, you know, I'm, I'm going for things. Beautiful so. bridge here, folks. Er, see, Eric, I, see, you hit like what I would call an egregious pool. Mm -hmm. But it was it was a very educated one because you can see what you left yourself with was lots of green to work with in this this area that's kind of picture made for a for a chipping situation. Yeah. Short game wise, what are you thinking? What are you lo looking at when you're kind of stalking the area? As as good as this might look, because it looks like I have a lot of green, I, I don't because of this ridge here. So I'll probably try to hit it fairly high, landing it somewhere about here, because it will it will go that way to the hole. Mm -hmm. uh, all the grain, everything's moving that way. So, you know, to get this, so to get to this shot. pretty far, and then once it lands, it's gonna kick too. It's gonna kick right, and then catch the grain and slope, and it's gonna, and the green's still with all the rain, they still have decent pace. My mind could be wandering on what I'm gonna have for dinner. It's not really focused on anything. My senses are alive with, you know, what my body feels like, what the green feels like, how much slope, how much wind. So, you know, I just, my, they're guiding me to where I want this ball to land. And I'll probably be taking it somewhere towards your ball. So then I just come back and look at it. Make a couple little waggles with about what the angle I'm gonna assemble feel like. With the weight, I wanna feel a nice little clip at the bottom. And then I'm into the shot. Yeah, right at my ball. And so you missed it. it by maybe <laughs> three yards, but it cost you out to yeah, a little got further. A, but you're you're putting uphill. Yeah, I got a 15 footer uphill. You know, so the way I used to play is I would be stuck on this. What do you mean stuck? Uh, on a on a 500 whatever yard par four, I got 208 into the hole. You're like, How do I? Have and now I got a 20 birdie. footer for birdie. I'd be like, God, you've, go, you know, come on, but. You know, I've been through that so much that it's not, it's not it's a necessary. Waste of it's a still, waste yeah. of everything. So, yeah. you know, so I, I just do the best I can. And then I'm, you know, again, when that one's done, I'm already starting to assess what's next. Right. And again, it's casual. It's not, it's not, you know, really heavily focused. I've played here enough, so I know the pace. I don't have to overlook at it. Uh, I just get a glance, the grain, I'm into it a little bit, it's coming from the right. So my final look will be from down behind the ball. And I do visualize the, the path and the pace right. that it's going on. And I have a spot that I want to roll it over. It's about halfway to the hole or usually at the pinnacle of the putt. So I look at that, once I see it and I feel the pace, same with all the other shots, my eyes stay on it. I come and get set up to that, to that point. And I let, uh, I just let it go. Short. Yeah. All right. You never know if, if, you, if you should say good par to a pro, <laughs> you know? Sometimes, <laughs> well, maybe for you it would be. Yeah. Come on, bud. Uh, that's a disappointment. <laughs> right. Right. Right out of the car. 
So you like to to open up the hole by, by just dead weight into into the cup on on all putts. Oh, uh, especially like a putt like this. Yeah, right. You're pretty quick going straight down everything. And kind of quick. Oh yeah. That's quick. <laughs> Smashed it. Ah, boy. Yeah. See, that's. That's, caught up to me eventually that's uh i mean that's more of you not knowing the pace yeah of right. that first one yeah uh and a, a complete wipe on the second one <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the, uh you know because i play with a lot of people here for, for their first time and a putt like that they're they're blowing it six feet past real easy yeah they're like whoa i didn't feel the thing it'd be that fast these greens out here at, at journey at pachanga are some of the toughest I've played anywhere in the country. What do you mean toughest? Uh, the, there's, they're, they're fairly grainy in spots. Okay, gotcha. Uh, the influence off the mountain up here and the creek bed down, you know, down here below us. Uh, and then the undulations of the greens, they're just difficult to read. Mm -hmm. I've only had a couple times where I've come out and had a run on the green since you know for seven years there's only been like two or three rounds you know when i came out and made 10 birdies and a couple bogeys and everything else man i've had 20 footers that i've misread by two feet <laughs> yeah <laughs> this hole plays as long as the first hole the par five but it's a par four um again another one of these awesome bridges Oh, so a lot of times you'll have 180 to 200 yards in on this hole. Oh, easy, especially today. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's that pin. So the pin's way in the back. So we got 476 to a back pin. I can I can go right to the right to the T in the ground because I already know what the flight I want. It'll look a lot like the first hole. That had a lot more power than your first drive. That one was <laughs> yeah, that one pretty good. That one's good. The first one was kind of like an exploratory drive. Like, what do I have today? And yeah, exactly. A little, a little bit more confident. I can usually get away with it with the driver, but put a long iron in my hand right out of the car. Yeah, right. Oh, That's I tough. suck. Yeah. <laughs> it's a struggle. That works. Yeah, it's fine. Not super solid, but fairway and good bounce. Yep, that worked. What do I got, Eric? Two, two fifty-two. Jeez, par four, two fifty-two. Okay, <laughs> two fifty-two, and it looked like I shot two fifteen. The screen is really deep. I just didn't hit that drive very so good. So the bunker's up and the left is, side. You're, I'm got no roll here. All right, so I'm gonna hit this just like a, a slight fade. And I, if I'm short, I'm, that's a fine, that's an okay spot, short? Yeah, short. The, the bunker on the right of the green is probably 230. Okay. Um, that's about the middle of the green. So, you know, you can be down there on that right side and pitch and kind of back up to it. All right. Cut. Oh, it's really good, Eric, if it goes Just to the right a little. a little bit. Okay. I think I'm real yeah. happy with that. Yeah, yeah, good strike, man. Sheesh. So I got 211. <clears throat> so it's a very similar shot I had on the par five. I'm gonna go to a little head. You cover. actually have two yards longer on this hole than you did on the par five left. Yeah. That's why you really gotta ignore the scorecard, huh? Uh, Sometimes. They're just. It's a. It, I mean, it's a. It's a great opening. You know, opening two holes because you can. You know, you can get after the par five a little bit and then yeah, hold on here. Yeah. So generally here starting four four is, is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel the wind from the left a little bit and I just have a starting point a little left of the hole. Oh, beautiful shot, Eric. Get back there. You stinker. Oh, wow. It curved right to it. Huh. And I think good. you're looking, you might have to look through the thing. I think you're looking at about a six footer, eight footer. Yeah. I'll take it. 
Hell yeah, you will. So I should have hit the head cover on the first on hole. Earth. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and that's that's a little bit of my ego sitting there from 208 going, ah, I can't hit a hybrid from here. Yeah, right. right? So yeah. so I give the four iron a little bit extra, and mm -hmm. look what it got me, a big right. old pull hook. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, especially right out of the car, I have to obey what my body feels like and not what I'm, what my normal is. So you were talking about it with the, the tee shot of the par five, but it, I think it's a, a common theme for how people shoot higher scores than maybe they should, where, because it seems like people are always going around the entire golf course, always trying to either do a little extra or push a little further than like either their level or what the shot requires. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the interference, right? So when we can play without the interference, then, then we strip it down to what the actual is. Mm -hmm. It's a 211 yard hybrid. That's what it is. So that's what it should have been on the last hole, but I. I got involved and I said, oh, I, got, I got to hit four iron. What here. was a situation in, in your pro career where you were under a lot of pressure to hit a certain shot and you had to back yourself off and say, hey, it's only a, you know, a, a, an up and down from two yards off the green or it's only a this or that. Did you ever have a, can you, can you recall a situation where you had to kind of back yourself off and say, hey, it, it's just another it, it's a certain style of golf shot? Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't back off, or <laughs> it worked out. There were plenty of times, and even when I won the uh, the Long Beach Open in 2014, yeah, um, I had 190 into 18. Yeah. I had a one-shot lead. I had 190 into 18. Yeah, the par five. Yeah, and it's just a nice six iron. Well, I got in there and gave it a little bit extra to make sure it got over the water. The pin was right. way in the back. Water right. wasn't even out of, in play. It was yeah. like 165 to cover the water. Right. But I gave it a little extra, and I almost hit my mom. She's up in the way right. Yeah. <laughs> over in that part of the green. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I I got it over the water, but it was not. It was in a fine spot, but from where I drove it, where it, you know, what I should have been. Now you said you got away. Obviously, you won that tournament, but. Yeah, you got so you had to get up and down for for birdie. For, no, than... I had to make par pretty much. I mean, oh, okay. I had two gotcha. guys that if they made eagle, uh, and and I made my par, we would have been a playoff. Oh, okay, so um, in that case, in that, and in I the... got lucky they didn't make eagle. I mean, one of them almost right, tipped in. Uh, would you call this like a half and half shot, half carry, half roll kind of shot, or um, how would you? How would see? I I I've, I will have the tendency to make things more difficult than they are yeah well, I want to I want to start making things as basic as they can be if you if you goose this a little bit we'll get all the way to the other side of the green oh okay if you if you which is which under, I was about to do because I'm look I'm looking more at this upslope here it's so I could feel that I was about to hit it hard yeah it doesn't no, it doesn't, doesn't need, need it okay no I mean you can just you can just you know just pitch it on the green just at a normal height about like this with that club landing it here and it mm -hmm. should, you know, unless you kind of scoop it, it'll- Show me that spot again. <clears throat> okay. Somewhere right in here, just a All yard right. or two on the green. Sit. Yeah, up right down. Yeah. Yeah, good shot. It just lofted out of the club a little lower than I thought, but Happy with that. I mean, from 250 to have that for par. Heck I'm, yeah. I like it. On this hole, most of the time, Yeah. if, uh, if somebody said, hey, I'll give you a three footer for par, <laughs> right. I, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> right, give it to me. Let's save some daylight. Yeah. Go make my three footer. You know, a lot of what I do when I walk around is I'm feeling with my feet. I'm seeing where a main tendency would be main influence on this part of the green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of checking the color of the green to see where the grain's going. And I'll, you know, in tournaments, I'll probably read it from that side of the hole. I'll read it from one of the sides. They always say the, the low side is the better. I find both of them being, but I won't do the full deal. So when I see the pace it's gonna go and the line I want it to go over, left edge, I'm done. That's that's what it's going to be. I've made a decision on that. I'm not changing it. I get in here. I get all my stuff lined up to that left edge. I get settled. My eyes stay down. 
and I misread it just by a little bit. Yep. So it was a little more than left edge even. Yeah. Well, really good four there. Yeah, I always take four here. So what do you see the, the main mistake that they're making if they're struggling with like the finishing putts, like the putt I just had there, or like a four footer, to even, you know, we've, I see some guys sometimes with probably two footers, you know? Yeah, probably the, the inconsistency that they hit the putt with. Oh, so uh, sometimes they, they, they smack it in yeah, there. They want it, the, yeah. yeah, the speed will change from, from five footer to five footer. The pace of the stroke will change. So it's hard to deliver that club face back where, where it needs to, back where it started if the pace of the stroke is going to be different from hole to hole or from nine to nine. Right. Uh, so when their pace gets off, then, then they start to question their read. And when the read gets questioned, now it's just this ping pong match of, of what, right. what do I do? Hit it harder, hit it softer, read this much, read that much. So, so is there a drill that you like to use with your players to get them a little bit more of a consistent speed on the short ones? Uh, I'll do, I'll do, a drill where I have eight, eight quarters. So it's a, it's like a putter length plus a foot. So yep. let's say a four foot putt. Mm -hmm. And I've got a quarter, 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 all the way around. Circle. Yeah. Yep. And I'll just sit there and I'll hit one after another. So I, I'll have two balls and I can't go to the next one until I make two in a row. So I'll go around once and then I'll go around again, trying to be, be, beat my last score. And then I'll do it again with my eyes closed with just one ball. Then I'll do it again with just one ball where I'm looking at the hole. Then I do it again with just one ball, just watching my hands, mm -hmm. just to see how all my components are working, to see mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're matching what they're doing versus what I'm feeling. Uh, what will that whole process take you? Is that like a two hour thing? No, or? it's 45 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not, you know, I'll sit there and- We're going beyond hobby when you start doing stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. 